So which looper is better? The Headrush Looper Board or the Singular Sound Eros? Want to find out more? Then stay tuned. Well, hey there, it's Scott at the Pedal Guy. How you doing? Well, we're all about pedal demos, pedal knowledge, and pedal sales. I love pedals and so do you. In this video, I'm going to take you through the differences between the Singular Sound Eros Loop Studio and the Headrush Looper Board. These are both top shelf, powerful looping solutions but there are some key significant differences between the two uh, and I think it's important to probably lay those out because I've been getting a lot of questions about this. Let's just get to it. So the first thing we want to get out of the way quickly is the size and weight differences. Uh, the Aeros Loop Studio comes in at a little under 8 inches long and it can fit very comfortably on a pedal board size 2.5 and above. So if you want to use it with other pedals and other effects, or if you want to use it with other singular sound products like the MIDI Maestro or the uh, Beat Buddy, not a problem. Um, and also, of course, if you want to uh, add an expression pedal to the Loop Studio, there's plenty of room to work with. The Headrush Looper Board, by comparison, is over 20 inches long. Definitely meant to be a standalone sort of product. You can certainly add in other effects. You can certainly add in an expression pedal because there is an input for that. And you can add in other things like synthesizers and things of that nature if you want to and make, create this whole loop scenario. And you can do that with the Eros as well, don't get me wrong. But when we're talking about the size difference, there is a remarkable difference between the two boards. When it comes to the weight difference between these two boards, they couldn't be further apart. The Eros weighs just a little over two pounds and is quite light and feathery, so that's why it works perfectly on your pedal board. The looper board, by comparison, is 17 pounds, so this is not a lightweight product at all, nor is it meant to be a lightweight product. It's meant to be used in a live environment, it's meant to take abuse, and so it really has to take a licking and keep on ticking, so that's really what this bad boy is all about. When it comes to effects, the looper board is the clear winner here because the looper board actually has effects built in. It has effects for vocals, it has effects for guitar, for bass, for drums and loops, whereas the loop studio does not have any effects at all. And there is a reason for this because they really do intend to have you use the loop studio with other pedals and effects. And that's why I've been saying all along it really fits well on a pedal board because it's really meant to be kind of the central nervous system for the rest of your pedal rig setup. Whereas with the looper board, it's meant to be that all-in-one solution. So you have to make up your mind which way you wanna go on that, but they're both viable solutions, but if you're basing your decision based solely on effects, the looper board is gonna clearly win here. As a quick sidebar, one of the things I really do like about the Eros is its ability to update over Wi-Fi. It's incredibly useful, especially when you are trying to get the latest and greatest firmware for the product. You can update it over your home Wi-Fi. I think that's really, really helpful. Now let's cover the inputs and the outputs of the Eros Loop Studio and the Headrush Looper Board. Looking at the back of the Eros, you can see that you have MIDI in and MIDI out. You also have an expression pedal input. You have a left and right mono input and a left and right mono output. On the side of the unit, you also have an additional stereo in and stereo out. On the back of the Headrush Looper Board, you can see that there is a MIDI in and MIDI out, as well as an expression pedal input. There are also four separate Neutra connections on the back as well, meaning that you can plug in either a quarter inch cable or an XLR cable into one of four different inputs. There's also a, an eighth inch auxiliary input. Additionally, there are four separate outputs for the Headrush Looper Board and the headphone output as well. So there are quite a few differences between the Headrush Looper Board and the Eros when it comes to inputs and outputs. So now let's cover track count. The Looper Board has the ability to record and play back four tracks of audio, and they can be used in a variety of different ways, like serial mode, sync mode, free mode. I've actually covered this in a video tutorial in the past, and I'll probably revisit it as the firmware was recently updated. One of the other cool things, though, is it's also got a backing track feature, which runs independently of those four tracks. So it does not affect your track count at all, but it gives you a means to play back a backing track that you can then loop against. So when it comes to the track count with the Eros, it's quite a bit different because you have what's called 2x2 two two mode and 6x6 six six mode. 2x2 two two mode means that within a song, you have two parts, and you can have two loops per part. So in essence, you could have four loops within a song. 6x6 six six mode takes that and blows it up because with 6x6 six six mode you can have six parts and you can have six loops per song, giving you 36 loops within a single song. 
That's a lot of looping. Just as a quick side note with the looper board, one of the other really cool features about it that we're not really talking about here, but it's something that you definitely can delve into if you want to, is its ability to be used as an audio interface with your favorite DAW. So if you want to use it with Pro Tools or Logic or GarageBand or Ableton Live or whatever, um, that's something that you can definitely do. So that's a very helpful feature as it doubles up not only just as a performance tool, but also as a recording tool. So now let's talk about expansion. When we're talking about the Eros Loop Studio, we're talking about expansion in a big way because there aren't any effects or anything like that on board. It is a looper. So what you need to do is you need to put in more effects, more pedals, synthesizers, drum machines, perhaps the Beat Buddy. Uh, you can also add, of course, the MIDI Maestro, an expression pedal. So there is a lot of room to expand with the Eros Loop Studio, which does make it a very versatile feature for people who really want to craft their sound. One thing to keep in mind though, if you're using a microphone or if you plan to use a microphone with the Eros is that you're going to need an impedance transformer if you're going to use a dynamic mic or you're gonna need a mic preamp of some kind if you're gonna use it with a condenser mic. Now when it comes to the looper board, that's kind of a different matter because the looper board is meant to be a one-stop shop solution. Now you don't need to add in any effects if you don't want to because there's already so much that comes in the board itself. However, you might want to get yourself an expression pedal, and of course, Headrush makes one, so there's your solution. One of the other things you can do with both the Headrush and the Eros is you can also uh, add in synthesizers and drum machines by a MIDI clock sync. So you have that ability as well. In fact, one thing I'm going to be doing with the looper board in the very near future is syncing it up with a head rush so that I can have the effects of the head rush actually sync up with the looper board so I can get the best of both worlds. But the thing that is really strong here about the looper board is it's got that one-stop shop solution so you really don't have to do anything more to it unless you want to, whereas the Eros is like a blank slate. It gives you that ability to uh, hone and craft your own sound and really get very granular with how you want to loop. So it really depends on how you want to approach it but those are the differences when it comes to expansion. Last but not least, we're gonna cover that tough subject, which is ease of use. Now you're not gonna like what I'm gonna say here, but I'm gonna have to say it anyway. When we're talking about ease of use between the Headrush Looper Board and the Eros Loop Studio, it's not up to me, it's up to you. Uh, and the reason I say that is because I've done videos on both of these products, I've shown you how to use them, really what it's going to come down to is it's going to come down to you watching those videos and figuring out which one makes the most sense to you. Frankly, honestly, they're both really easy to use. Um, they obviously have big workflow differences between the two, but what it's going to come down to, again, is the ease of use as you perceive it by watching the videos. So I very highly recommend you go back and watch all of my videos on these products, but just know that either of them are very powerful solutions. It just, it just it doesn't come down to me. It comes down to you and your opinion of that. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope you found it informative and useful. If you have any further questions, use the comment section, and I'll get back to you when I can. See you soon. Well, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions, be sure to visit us at thepedalguide.com. But in the meantime, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. And also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for weekly videos and tutorials. Thanks for stopping by here at thepedalguide.com, where I love pedals and so do you.